Welcome back to the Tip of the Iceberg podcast, brought to you as always by InsideThePenguins.com. Screw Metropolitan Division Power Rankings, Horowat. We're going to go straight to the Eastern Conference Wild Card. Five teams fighting for two spots. It's going to be that way for it seems like the rest of the season. One team might bow out, but very close right now as all five of those teams are separated by four points in the standings. Right now, the Washington Capitals have the first wild card with 60 points. The Penguins and the Islanders are tied for the second wild card with 59. Then it's the Sabres and the Panthers tied with 56. Let's give our power rankings for this, Horwat. Who do you have at number five and number four in your Eastern Conference wild card power rankings? My five and four go to both Atlantic Division teams, ironically. <clears throat> I got Buffalo at five, Florida at four. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buffalo is at the very bottom, despite how much of a fun situation they would be to knock somebody out of the postseason. I just don't see it happening this year for them. I mean, that goaltending is still very, very interesting. It's not it's not ideal quite yet. Um, and sure, they're getting otherworldly production from some, off, from some offensive players, but, I mean, that defense is still spotty. I mean, Rasmus Dalin's having a great season. He's having a great season offensively. I have no idea what his defensive numbers look like. I haven't heard him – do that much defensively, he's having a standout season at scoring. So I don't know what the blue line holds. Craig Anderson is still their starter, I think. Mm -hmm. That makes me question a lot of things about the team, but not enough. I mean, I think they could be a very interesting piece next year and very interested to see what they do for a goalie this offseason. But this is their building year, and it's quite fun. Tage Thompson's eating the world alive, Mm -hmm. and they're going to be a threat for years to come. It's just... Um, and they could still be a threat this year, you know, pull a few things together. Certain other teams fall off, but just as of right now, they're my five. And for Florida, I mean, just someone else had to be above Buffalo at this moment. They have a little bit more sure goal, sure goaltending whenever uh, it's healthy. And yeah, I mean, yeah, they're questionable everywhere else. I mean, I don't know how good or bad Matthew Kachuk is all of a sudden looking. Matthew Kachuk's doing good, but he is. I mean, he's fifth in the NHL in points, but. Oh, yeah. he is? Shoot, okay. Yeah, he has 71 I'm, points in I'm 50 games. Thinking of the back end of that deal. I'm thinking of the uh, Huberto not doing well in yeah. Calgary. I got I was that. Like, yeah, he's pretty good. Okay, I got it confused. <clears throat> yeah, it's the fact that they won the deal. It's still, I just don't know how Florida is uh, going to be able to get it done. So my questions, I mean, they're behind Buffalo right now. Ooh, because Buffalo has three games in hand. Ouch. Yes. Still, I uh, Eh. I mean, it's the bottom two teams, it's two of the Atlantic teams. I'm expecting the Metro to hold both of the spots in the wild card by the time it's all said and done. Yeah, the, I mean, it helps that there's three Metropolitan Division teams in this, but I have the exact same five and four. Uh, not because I, I disrespect the Buffalo Sabres, but the same thing you said. This is a building year for them. This is much better than they expected to be. And also because their general manager said he's not going to go out there and sell the farm for a team that's going to make the playoffs and then go up against a one or two seed. They like their farm system. They don't want to start selling pieces just yet. They're just not at that point in their rebuild. I mean, yes, they're nearing the end. And yes, next year, they might be a very dangerous team and a very good, all of a sudden, Atlantic division. But I just don't think that the three goalie system is one that's going to be successful. I mean, Anderson has 41 games played. I believe this makes no sense. 31 games played, excuse me, I think. I got to look into that because I have Anderson 41, Lukanen at uh, 23 and Comrie at 27, which makes no sense at all. Um, I got to go back and look at that. But Anderson is their starting goaltender with Uka Pekka Lukanen and Eric Comrie also coming in to fill for them. And I just don't see them holding up down the stretch because I don't think they're going to get any additions as well. Do you have that in front of you? Yeah, what goalie numbers did you say you had? 41, 23, and 27. I don't know what I was looking at. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Craig Anderson is 41 years old. Uka Pekka Lukanen is 23 years uh, old. And Eric Comrie is 27 years old. That makes sense. I looked the wrong wrong column. <laughs> the wrong column. Two over. I'll read over the games started. Uh, yeah. UPL is at 21. Craig Anderson at 16. And then Eric Comrie at 13. So, so again, they're all around. They're, they're actually closer. I don't know. <laughs> I put the freaking ages <laughs> oh lord yeah they don't well, have a true starter it seems it just seems no. they're flipping through those three which is a very weird system but for what it's worth i mean 13 6 and 2 from the uh from uka pekka luka is pretty yeah. good i mean it's still an 899 though how do you have 12 win 13 wins and you're an 899 
very talented scoring. Remember, Buffalo is the highest scoring team in the National Hockey League right now. And that's something. Right? I mean, they're, they're trying to outscore their problems. And again, as we've known, that's not always the best uh, best recipe for success in the National Hockey League. So I have them at five. I'm going to move on to the next one. So I try to get past that blunder. Florida, I have more faith in Florida than you do. I think their goaltending is atrocious, though. I mean, yeah. Sergei Bobrovsky, for what he's been, has been one of the worst deals of our lifetime. Um, so Bobrovsky, again, struggling. Spencer Knight struggling. And what are you going to do when Alex Lyons in that? I mean, he, he's had to play a couple of games over the past couple of weeks. But I still think they have enough talent on that roster if they can get the goaltending, if they can get a little bit better defensively, that they have the talent to potentially push for that spot. I think they're dangerous. I think Matthew Kachuk, is playing out of his mind right now. He just had a five-point game against the Tampa Bay Lightning right out of break. He was the NHL All-Star MVP. So I, I do think that there's a very good chance that they make it, but I really think that when you look at these five teams, there's not much separating any of them. So these are my rankings, but at the same time, this could switch as early as Sunday because these teams are all very close, and I think you'll notice that by who I have at number one. Really quickly, number three for me is the Pittsburgh Penguins. I think mm. they hold games in hand. Let me look over to the right here. If you're looking on inside the Penguins on YouTube, we have the standings up. They have games in hand on everybody except Buffalo. Huge. They need to address the bottom six. We talked about that already. Can you trust the goaltending? That's a big question. I think you look at it exactly the way you look at the Florida Panthers. Can you trust the goaltending? Can you trust the depth? Can you trust the defense? Those are the biggest questions for Florida and for Pittsburgh. That's why I have them at 3-4. I had them at 2, and that's because of the amount of games in hand they have the Penguins at least, um, because they have it over Washington. They have three over the Islanders who they are currently tied with in points. They have four. Yeah. That's huge. I get this. These, this Penguins team is struggling to find wins at times, but I think in four games, if you had to give them four important games to get one point, to get one point, not even get, not even get a win to get an overtime point, which by the way, we've gone to, I didn't even look into that number. What? Like, Seven times the last eight games now, yeah, something like that. I think that. we can get. I think we can get a point out of it. Um, I think we can have enough faith in the Penguins to do that. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to come down to that, but I believe that th those games in hand give us a huge boost in my power rankings, at least. Mm -hmm. Um, especially over the Islanders, who, like I said, I'll take as third in this little situation because that's that's all far. That's four games is a lot to be behind. Yeah. Four games is a ton to be behind. And I know you traded for Bo Horvat, one of the big fish, but I mean, you fall it immediately up by overpaying for him. I know that doesn't have any effect on his play this season, but um, I don't know. I, now all of a sudden he's an $8 million man, not producing at an $8 million level in my eyes, at least. Uh, he has 32 goals this season already. So he's yeah, on pace for but... over 40 goals. Which, I mean, again, not to get into any player in specifically, but you have sure. the Islanders. So you have the Islanders, Penguins, and then the Capitals, right? Yes. Okay, well, I have the Penguins, Capitals, and then the Islanders. And since we're talking about the Islanders, I have them at number one because I think the Bo Horvat trade was a statement. Was, hey, we know where we're lacking. We need better scoring. And they went out and they got better scoring. I mean, he instantly becomes the Islanders' leading scorer by a lot. Uh, he's playing alongside Matthew Barzell, which makes that a very good top line. I think if you look at their top six, it's better than it's been in a long time. They have one of the better defenses in this group right now. And they have easily, and I mean easily, the best goaltender in of these five teams. Not a doubt. I don't care what Casey, sorry, not Casey Smith. Uh, he had a good game on Tuesday, but I don't care what Tristan Jari does. He's not going to be as good as Ilya Sorokin down the stretch. He isn't. Sorokin is first in the league in save percentage this year. He is third in goals allowed average, and he has been that good since coming over to North America. He's just that guy. Everybody wants to talk about the, the Igor Shosturkin and the Rangers goaltending situation, but the Islanders have something amazing in Ilya Sorokin. Now they're getting offense to help get them out to leads and then just be able to shut things down with Pelic, Pulak, Mayfield, and that defense, Noah Dobson. I really like the Islanders. I know that they have the most games played out of everybody here, but I think they're going to have the best latter half of the season, which gives them the number one spot in my power rankings. Uh, and then we'll finish off with the Capitals. I have them at two. You have them at one. 
I like them bringing in Strom and Milano. I think it's worked out well. They just gave both of those guys contracts over the break. And they're in the position they're in right now with Oshie having missed most of the season, Tom Wilson having most, most of the season, Nick Backstrom having missed most of the season, and Anthony Mantha performing really poorly for somebody who's taken up a lot of cap space. If they can move on from Mantha, add another piece, they become very dangerous in my eyes. I do think their goaltending is gettable with Darcy Kemper and then Lindgren as the backup. But when I look at the Capitals, I think they're still a dangerous team. And I think they've done well to try to revamp their forward lineup once last season ended. And they could tell they were dead in the water with the lineup they already had. Yeah, it's really tough to, I mean, the Capitals are also always the team that no matter what, won the division every year. Yep. Do they still have that in them? I mean, yeah, they're in this position because they had a ton of injuries, but uh, it's still a scary team. Sure, they have a lot of focus on getting Ovechkin goals, but uh, along with goal scoring comes some wins on occasion. Hmm. So they can still pull together wins. That's kind of why they stand at number one for me in this power ranking. It's They have the sneaky ability to just win games despite – how good or bad their roster construction might be. And it's getting better. Mm. It's a weird situation where, yeah, you look at the Penguins and the Capitals and you go, oh, they're in the same situation. Aging players not performing to their level. Well, first of all, that's looking at it on paper because if you look at the minor details on both teams, the aging players are still doing just fine. I mean, the Capitals just happen to be getting young young studs doing a little more. Mm. Whereas the Penguins just don't have a bottom six. Yeah. The one question I have about the Capitals is their defense. Yes. Their, de- their defense and their goaltending, their back end kind of scares me a little bit. Uh, but their forwards, the way they've revamped that, getting Oshi back, getting Tom Wilson back. I mean, think about that. We have really not seen Tom Wilson at all this season. He's played in a handful of games, and now he's injured again. He's day-to-day. He is a massive part of that lineup. You know, Marcus Johansson has been great for them this season, but getting Tom Wilson back, getting... Oshi back and getting him to play to the standard that he's used to that's huge for the Capitals Uh, it's going to be a fun stretch here Uh, that's why I'm excited that we went to this format instead of just the Metropolitan Division rankings because watching these five teams over the next two months is going to be very interesting not to mention the fact that over the next month all of these teams are going to be in it for a lot of trade deadline pieces the Islanders kick things off in a big way getting Horvat. But you look at the Island or the, the Rangers, the Capitals, the Penguins, they're all names for Besser. And the Capitals are a big player for who am I thinking? Another yeah, winger, one. Timo Meyer. Tack on the Rangers and Patrick Kane, possibly. And the, the Devils are going to go out and potentially get either Kane or Meyer. Like the East is going to get tougher before it gets easier. 